Today we're going to the Cosmic Campground. They call it that because the views of the night sky are supposed to be great. Camp and see the cosmos. It makes sense, right? I mean, it kind of sounds like a marketing gimmick at first, but when you think about it, it does, it does actually make sense. The campground itself is on the western border of New Mexico, but we are starting out in Arizona. More specifically, going east on Highway 260, starting from Indian Pine. After 40 minutes or so, we hit Eager slash Springerville. My family has history in this town, though. Personally, I don't. I was born afterwards. Um, apparently, my parents lived in a haunted house in the center of town. The town itself is pretty sleepy these days, but I wouldn't be surprised if it started picking up soon. This part of Arizona is growing fast, probably because so many people are leaving California because of how expensive it's getting. It's not as close as, say, Phoenix, but the elevation up here, one mile up, keeps you away from the heat of the valley. Leaving town, we took 191 south, which turns into 180 after Alpine. Both of these highways take you through Apache National Forest, and I really like the scenery on this drive. I got some great pictures of the lightning at the overlook at Heifer Basin last time I came through here. Driving into the Cosmic Campground, you're going to be greeted with the standard National Forest Campground sign, but this one's got a little something extra on it. You see, the Cosmic Campground is officially classified by the International Dark Sky Association as a Dark Sky Sanctuary. They've got this handy dandy little map you can use to see which places offer the best views of the night sky, and if you look closely, you'll notice that the Cosmic Campground is among the best. Look at that, no civilization anywhere. It even kind of looks like the highways are trying to keep their distance. They just make a circle all around it. All that is to say, if you want to see the stars and don't want to leave the continental US, this is about as good as it gets. All of the lots in the campground were actually taken when we rolled up, which wasn't so big a deal. There's spots back in the bush where you can make camp. That's because we gambled. We went on Labor Day, thinking the relative popularity of Labor Day camping trips would be offset by how remote the campground was. We were, of course, wrong. Luckily, there's a lot of empty space to set up shop, so the only real downside was a 10-minute walk to the bathroom. And setting up camp wasn't too bad. I mean, my parents brought their little trailer, so they were ready right from the start. I, on the other hand, was stuck roughing it among the ants and the rocks, and there's a lot of both. <laughs> you'll want to clear a spot on the ground of any big rocks before setting up a tent site, and you'll definitely want to keep your tent shut at all times, because an ant colony will try to set up shop inside. Or at least I'm told by a, you know, a friend of a friend. Um, the most important thing when going to the Cosmic Campground is to keep an eye on the weather. Like I said, this was actually our second time staying there. The first was about a month before this and left us with a big fat view of nothing. So when we drove there today, we made sure the skies were totally clear. As nighttime fell though, we started to worry that the clouds were conspiring to block our view of the stars yet again. In these situations, all you can do is stay positive and hope something changes. There's a few stars. There's a star. 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 In our case, it did seem to be getting worse. We got rained on and actually went to bed with only a sliver of hope that our luck would turn around. But in this case, it did. When I woke up in the middle of the night, I was greeted with the most perfect view of the night sky I have ever seen. The clouds were pretty much gone, the moon had set, and even the brighter planets like Mars and Venus weren't visible, which meant the sky was about as dark as you could ever hope for. And the first thing that stands out to you on nights like this is the Milky Way. It's not just a band in the sky, you can actually make out some of its texture and its depth. I don't know about you, but whenever I see the Milky Way, I'm reminded that we're all living on a giant rock in space, spinning around one big cosmic cloud. But the Milky Way isn't the only galaxy you can see with your naked eyes. 
I had learned just a few years ago working on another video that you can actually see Andromeda, our neighboring galaxy, if the conditions are good enough, and this night they were. I actually found it almost immediately, which even though I'm proud of, belies how hard it is to see. And the images I took, it's unmistakable. In person, yeah, it kind of looks like this. It's a kind of hard to see blotch, but if you know what you're looking for, it's definitely a blotch. And it's big, it's always hard to tell in photos because you have no sense of scale. So in order to demonstrate its size, you can imagine something familiar, like say, the moon right next to it. Apparently this is becoming a habit in these videos. You know, this isn't just a telescope zoomed in on some dot. We're talking, I mean, this is a naked eye view of another galaxy. I mean, the most distant object that any human has ever, ever seen with their own two eyes. So, yeah, so that was pretty incredible. Uh, but as you can tell, they're not great pictures. Astrophotography is hard. This is probably my fourth or fifth session, and even though each try gets a little better, I think it's fair to say that I just need better hardware to step my game up. Even after fiddling with my settings for over an hour, it was, it was clear that even my best options were going to be pretty limited. So I was snapping pictures for most of the night, and I didn't end up taking any that I thought were print worthy, but there is one picture that genuinely blew me away. It's in this series. Jupiter was the brightest object in the sky, so I figured I'd point my camera at it and see what happens. The second image gives you a sense of A, how bright it was, and B, scale, because that blotch at the bottom is me getting my big dumb head in the way of the shot. But you zoom in just a little bit and, you know, what's this? There's, there's something there. Maybe it's just a twinkle or like a star right behind Jupiter, but it's still kind of bright. Let's turn down the exposure and get a better look. Wow, you know what that is? <laughs> Those are some of Jupiter's moons. I don't know which ones, it has like a million. But what really gets me is that just like Andromeda, they are so close to being visible with the naked eye. This isn't some Hubble deep field image. This was taken at like 10% at like zoom with my little handheld vlogging camera. I am 36 years old, and I love space stuff. So I've spent more than my share of nights looking up at the stars. But the Cosmic Campground gave me the opportunity to experience our sky in a way that I never have before. It brings space closer, if that makes sense. It reminded me that the night sky is more than just stars, you know, little white dots. There are spiral arms. There's distant galaxies, there's local planets and their moons. It is an experience like no other. And all we have to do as a society to bring that experience into our lives is just turn off the lights and look up. So I just want to take a second to point out how cool the International Dark Sky Association is. These are people who are trying to protect that experience. Not for profit, not for clout, you know, not that I think there's a lot of clout in that, uh, but just not for any reason other than they believe that people seeing the night sky has value. Value that can't be measured in dollars. And it certainly did for me. Waking up the next morning, I was <laughs> exhausted, obviously. But after making a nice hot cup of some really awful Starbucks hot cocoa that I will never buy again, I was able to just kick back and enjoy a peaceful morning under the New Mexico sun. The Cosmic Campground is great. I'm grateful that there are people out there taking real steps to protect experiences like this, because I will remember this night for the rest of my life. And I think if more people had experiences like this, the world would be a better place. I don't know how exactly, but you just, you feel closer, more connected to the world when you get to experience those natural wonders that are ever present, but hidden by the realities of our day-to-day -day lives. So as always, thank you for joining me on this adventure. Um, I didn't get any prints from this trip, but I do have some links down below if you want to check out my other photography. And uh, go ahead and subscribe, hit the bell icon to get notified of my next upload.